Hey friends, I think it's time we had a quick chat about GAS. It's the acronym known as Gear Acquisition Syndrome, which is essentially the reason you keep buying plugins that end up collecting digital dust in your Ableton browser. I wanted to try to get ahead of the Black Friday craze that's about to hit your eyeballs and brain this coming holiday season and make the case that potentially your money would be better spent or more wisely spent if you consider the following. If you took the greater YouTube tutorial world at face value, you might assume that you actually need hundreds of plugins to create mixes that stand up to other modern mixes. The sheer amount of plugin carrot dangling is utterly staggering. Everyone seems to have the latest plugin on release day, and if you don't have it, you're gonna fall behind or something. Getting into the music production tutorial jungle on YouTube means that you're instantly and relentlessly marketed to from every angle. Sponsored videos and tutorials covering various plugins smash you in the face constantly. And then YouTubers who are desperate for views clamber over each other to try to get you to watch their coverage of the latest and greatest plugin that way more often than not does precisely the same thing that the last 4,000 plugins do. It's just new and shiny. Oscar Wilde famously said there are two great tragedies in life. One is not getting what you want, and the other is getting it. Something you'd do well to understand early in your journey is that humans, for the most part, enjoy the wanting of the thing way, way more than the actual having of the thing. No matter what you're into, cars, cameras, plugins, synthesizers, and on, this is a hyper common human behavior trait. And to add insult to injury, the more time you spend mind shopping where you decide you want something, then you compare thousands of products, thousands of pros and cons and options, you could have been making music the whole time. Now, it's true that we're all on a mission for dopamine, or in other words, what floats your boat. And if you truly enjoy shopping and it fills you up, then who am I to say you shouldn't do it? Knock yourself out. But if you're noticing diminishing returns on your time and money, and more importantly, you're noticing less music come out of your studio, hear me out. The truth is that most all new plugins coming out onto the scene are simply just the same effect wrapped up into a fancy looking user interface and a giant marketing budget behind it. Companies spend big on cinematic trailers, they send out hundreds of NFR license, and before you know it, the plugin is sitting in your cart and you're about to pull the trigger. I'm telling you right now, it's extremely rare for a truly novel plugin to come out that actually does a novel thing. And what's worse is that many of these new shiny plugins that are coming out actually sound worse than some stock plugins in Ableton. I still to this day am utterly amazed at how good Ableton and Softube's glue compressor sounds versus how little resources it uses with zero processing latency. I think it's undersung as potentially one of the greatest achievements in modern audio processing with compressors. I commonly prefer the sounds that I get through it over other compressors in my collection. Now there are definitely new developments in plugins and occasionally a device will come out that's truly novel, but it's very few and very far between. If you shut your eyes and simply use the controls on any given synth or effect, the whole landscape begins to change. As a music producer, you're someone who's looking to create what is heard, not seen. So you need to learn to stop shopping with your eyes and start listening with your ears. And this brings me to my next point. If you wanna improve the mixes that are coming out of your studio, likely what you need is not another shiny plugin that fill in the blank producer uses on every track, but how to use what you already have. At this point in history, there are technologies working against you and technologies working for you. What is absolutely working against you is the advertising industrial complex that is so effective that it'll send you ads simply if you think of a thing well before you say it out loud. And no, it's not reading your mind, at least not yet. It's studying your habits, and the trends of folks who have similar habits tend to buy similar things. We're all victims of the system, but that's a topic for another day. On the other hand, the technologies that are working for you now are that professional level audio training is becoming cheaper and cheaper as music colleges are losing more and more of their grip on the educational market. For example, an in-person music college can cost upwards of twenty-five dollars to $40,000 a year and not cover nearly as much focused information as an inexpensive online course can. My number one piece of advice for you now is to ask yourself the following question. Do you truly understand the tools that you already own? Be honest with yourself. Are you reaching for a plugin because you know that you can solve a mix issue or create a specific sound with it? Or are you using it because fill in the blank producer uses it on every track? If I may, I'd like to make the suggestion that maybe your money would be much better spent on education and training. Now, I'm sure at this point you know I'm about to pitch my own Ableton Live courses, and I'm going to call myself out here because I'm also pitching my wares to you. But here's the thing. I'm only one of many teachers out there, and you may or may not resonate with me, and you may also use a different DAW than Ableton. 
The point I'm trying to make here is that no matter who you are, and no matter how many people try to tell you otherwise, you don't need more plugins. What you need is to understand audio processing so you can get the maximum value out of what you already have. If you get proper training, when an actually novel and useful device comes out, you'll know it and you'll make good use out of it. You'll also know if that new plugin is just a repeat of a billion other plugins that already exist. Also, the benefits of actually knowing how to play an instrument such as a keyboard or a guitar in the studio is so valuable. If you're a musician, consider lessons from a music teacher that you look up to. If you're a singer, maybe consider vocal training. And if you're just buying plugins for the sake of it, I don't know, maybe buy a loved one something instead. We live in a golden age of online education and there's no shortage of amazing teachers. So if you're still with me here, first of all, if you want Ableton Suite, I can get 40% off the software via special EDU discounts thanks to Ableton recognizing Seed the Stage courses as officially official. Also, my courses are very different from other courses on Ableton. They're not timed. You take them at your own pace and when you buy them, you have access to the video lessons for life. Most other courses kick you out after a certain period and don't cover nearly as much. In total, there's over a hundred hours of video lessons between the four courses, songwriting, sound design, mixing, and live performance. We also have a super friendly and exclusive Discord server for questions, track feedback, support and social following for your releases, and more. If you want to learn more about my courses, you can click up here or check the links out in the description and comments. Now, whether the training is coming from me or whomever, I hope that you'll consider that the real upgrade your studio needs is you. If your ears and your mind are honed in, your mixes will benefit so much more. It's much less the tools that you use and it's way more how you use them. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. I'll see you next time. Thanks.